It's time for our training camp six and six. Uh, still brought to you by nobody. Damn. Damn. That's all right. Uh, what it is, though, is us bringing you the top six stories of training camp on every single practice day. So we got more than a few this week. Of course, I mean, maybe we'll do a pick six at six on Friday of six things to watch during preseason game number one because it is game week. And that is where we start as we wrap things up uh, for this first portion, the gameless portion of training camp. And what has been in through my eyes, a successful camp. Um, and I love the structure of it. And I talked about this a lot earlier in the show, but to rehash some of the high level things here for those that were not listening earlier, which I assume is most of you, there's a light day today after a heavy day yesterday, and they've done a really good job of mixing how they're practicing and this, this kind of idea of added volume that Eric Bieniemy wants while making sure that doing a lot more than in the past hasn't resulted in a lot of silly injuries that are, I don't want to say entirely preventable, but could have been mitigated in terms of the risk. Um, Rivera is a guy that has, for all we make fun of him and the analytics side of things and the, what analytics led you to Carson Wentz. Um, he is a guy that has leaned into some of the sports science uh, for a long time. And some of the people that he brought with him from Carolina um, are in that department and the understanding what the enemy wants to do and running more dense practices, right? More plays in the same amount of time, more volume uh, to use the more technical term and, uh, and creating a practice structure and a plan along with the coaching staff to get there. To me, it's obvious that has happened um, because it's such a good, like what strength and conditioning coaches would see that and go, that's the smart way to do that. And as a result, they've been relatively clean from an injury standpoint. Today, um, they run the 10-10-10 style of practice uh, where it's 10 offensive plays, 10 defensive plays, then 10 special teams uh, plays or 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, depending on which uh, which period. Um, and they it, it helps guys stay off their feet um, and keep an easy day easy. I'm a big proponent of easy days easy, hard days hard. Today's an easy day. It's an easy day for anyone. But what's also happening is – because they've done this the right way and they've built up a good ramp and now are practicing at this hard, harder intensity with more plays on the average day, on, on the hard days, which are more, most days in training camp, they've created more resilient athletes. And so these guys should, should, knock on wood, be more resilient to injury during the season because they're just better conditioned. And there, there's kind of two ways to think about this. Um, I'll, I'll use, it's not really analogies, but two examples, right? So... Let's say you have to run in a game at 18 miles an hour. A lot of people traditionally be like, well, I got to run 18 miles an hour and I got to be really good at running 18 miles an hour. And my school of thought is, well, what if we train you to run 22? Now, 18 is not nearly as fast. So your effort level is not as high. Your stamina is greater. Your ability to do, to perform, like, would you rather perform a complex task going full speed or, or just be able to take your time if the goal is accuracy take your time so if you can make it easier then great and i think that some of that thinking has kind of gone into this where we're going to make practice almost harder than the games in some situations to make it so that you can function well in the game by the same token if you have to run and you know i gotta run 10 100 yard sprints on a game day well you could also you know kind of the eb approach is like well i'm going to train you to run 15 and that way, 10 is nothing. That way, when you only have to run 10, your injury, uh, you know, if your capability is 15, then your chances you're going to get hurt are not not high because you're not going to be capped out. And so days like today are important from the light standpoint to be able to recover and be fresh on those days when it's time to go run the 15 or time to run the, you know, the 18 miles an hour. And so, uh, again, just really impressed with how they're structuring everything and how they're making sure to balance that with you know the right meetings and, and all that kind of stuff that you talk to players and it seems like they're really enjoying the way that Eric Bannon is teaching the offense and it's also created great opportunities for the defense because this is the other trickle down of kind of running practice the way that they're doing um, is if you run 100 plays because the offensive coordinator wants to, wants to run 100 plays, 
it's 100 plays for the defense, too. And so some of these defensive back combinations, some of the pass rush combinations, some of the, the linebacker combinations, they've had a chance to experiment more defensively than they ever had in the past. And I think that is also going to pay dividends for them to, uh, come the regular season. So practice structure remains a top story for me. Um, and I think today is just another reminder of, of even though it's a lighter, easier day where it seems like they don't get a lot done, they actually are super efficient. And even today, I mean, they ended 20 minutes early because they got the work done they needed to and then got off the field. Um, so it, it's really just smart. Um, and there's there's a lot of credit to go around. Everyone wants to give it to EB, and like he deserves a lot of it. Um, but there's a lot of credit from the the trainers and the, the health staff and the sports science people to Ron Rivera for bringing everybody together. So credit, credit where it's due. Uh, all right, training camp pick six at six. Things more specific to today. Jacoby Brissett got reps with the first team offense. Oh, is that a thing? Big thing, little thing, not a thing at all. Here's what Ron Rivera said when asked about it afterwards. Yeah, uh, at some point, he's going to have to work with them, you know, just so he gets to know them and they get to know him. Um, we started talking about that the last couple days, trying to figure out when would be a good opportunity to do it. And uh, so one of the things that Eric and Tavita thought this would be a good good, good one with the 10-10-10 practice today. And so we went ahead and gave him the last couple in each period. And there were periods it looked like, at least to my vantage point, that Brissett was out there like the entire, uh, the entire time with the ones. Um, you know, Ron would know he's the head coach, I guess. But um, and maybe it's one of the periods like he split reps with Hal and then just stayed out there with the twos. But I, I, I thought there were some times where they jogged out as a first team offense for the first time after you know the threes had been out there and they rotated back around and Brissett's the guy that jogged out. Anyway, whatever. Like the the larger point is correct. If Jacoby has to play this year, and again, this team has played three quarterbacks basically every year since Kirk Cousins left, if not literally every year since three Cousins or since Cousins left, and that's at least three. Um, don't need to remind everybody about 2019. Um, but you want those reps to be in the bank. And a day like today that's a little bit lighter, that is about the mental reps, about some of the timing, about some of the intricacies not full speed, let's go make plays, we're not competing, like you are competing, but it's the ones on the twos and the threes, um, not ones on ones, good on good. Those are the reps you want to get your back up, and so a, a good chance today, and they they did that. As for Brissett getting acclimated, if they do need him, um, here was Ron on, on how the veteran nature and the veteran experience that Jacoby has plays into that in a positive way. It's a little bit different, it is. Um, you know, Jacoby is a veteran guy, and him getting acclimated happens a lot quicker than, than younger guys, obviously. And that's one of the things that um, I think bodes well for a guy like Jacoby, you know, being part of your quarterback room. You know, he doesn't need the, he doesn't need the total number that, you know, we've been trying to get Sam at. And again, like when you run 100 plays, it's easier to get a couple of extra snaps in for your backup guy. Now, when you're doing a situational period, you're not going to be like, all right, switch it halfway through. And you also don't want to run your receivers and your offensive line, your first team in the ground, just so the quarterback can get a, the, the second team quarterback can get some extra reps. But that's why today, with a little bit lower intensity on all of the reps, is a good day to mix it in. And Brissett, because he's got so much experience, as Ron said, can theoretically take a little bit more out of it. Uh, Logan Thomas, this thing number three in our pick six at six, six most important and interesting things from training camp today. Uh, Logan Thomas out again. Day three in a row, starting to get a little concerned on it. Uh, not ideal. Here's Rivera afterwards. Slowly, gradually, you know, he's a guy that we want to be careful with uh, first and foremost. Uh, so the thing that we've got to, you know, be aware of is just, you know, he's an older guy. He is coming off uh, an injury. Yes, it was, you know, two seasons ago. But you, you can't be too careful, especially in this situation. And in this offense, knowing just how vital the tight end is, to this uh, offense, you know, we've got to be very smart about that. <sighs> he's also got to practice and he's got to get ready for the season. Um, you know, a good way to not be ready is to mix. You know, we talked all uh, 10 minutes about the ramp up period, right? If you if you had to skip a couple steps, if you think of it as a staircase, not a ramp, then the analogy works better. Like, you don't want to skip too many steps. Like, if you, if you got to skip one every now and again, like, it's pretty easy to catch up. You start skipping three, four steps, like, I know Logan Thomas is tall, but come on. Uh, so getting him back out there soon, I think, is important for his preparedness for the regular season. With that said, 
I do trust from a mental standpoint that Logan Thomas is in great shape. He seems to know this offense very well. Uh, he has had a fantastic training camp. He knows where he's supposed to be. He's got good rapport with Hal. He's got good rapport with Brissett. Um, I, I've been very impressed. And th- his movement has been great as well. Like, he looks as, as quick and as powerful and as fast as 2020 Logan Thomas. So, um, does he ultimately get back and get healthy and, and get back on that ramp up for the season is the most important question. But, um, you know, being cautious is also understandable. And it's not like he's behind mentally. So, um, I think I think that sits well with Rivera and Biennemi and where they're at right now. This one, uh, this one's a little interesting for sure. So we're walking off the practice field today, and there's you know some guys in tryout gear, and you're like, oh, I wonder who these guys are. I wonder what position. And then then you see that one of them is kicking footballs with his left foot, punter style. And you're like, that's a that's is this the year that Tressway finally doesn't have to play the preseason? That would be cool. I've been advocating for that for years. Sign an extra punter instead of instead of wasting the 90th roster spot on a guy that you're definitely not going to keep. Just go ahead and sign an extra punter and protect Tressway for the season. He'll be ready to go week one. Um, is that what's happening? And turns out uh, the news is slightly worse than that. What's well, it's just on? out of abundance of concern. Just want to make sure, you know, Tress has got a little tightness in his lower back. So we just want to bring a couple of guys and get a chance to watch him. Oh, by the way, that uh, that wasn't a deep breath by Rivera here. So we just want to bring a couple of guys and get a chance to watch him. Um, Anthony, there was, uh, I think it was a bee that flew like right here. And so we, he kind of. That's actually funny. <laughs> I don't know if it was a bee or whether there's like a, I, I, was, I was far enough away that I couldn't see exactly what type of large flying bug it was. But Ron, very calmly. Away. Mm. Hate to see it. Can't be having can't be having that happen. Anyway. Uh Tressway, back tightness. I think you shut him down for the rest of the training camp. Protect Tressway at all costs. Now, I did also find it interesting though that uh they worked out some long snappers today as well. And Ron seemed to uh, put the kibosh on that being any uh, reflection of Cameron Cheeseman's job so far in training camp, where he's had some bad snaps. He said, you know, when you try out punters, you need you need snappers. But it's the kind of thing where, um, I mean, you could just have Cheeseman snap to him. You could just toss him the ball. Like, there's a lot of ways you could work around that other than having a long snapper. You bring in a long snapper to try out because you want to try out a long snapper. You want to have a file in case all of a sudden in the game on Friday, Cheeseman sends one over someone's head or into the ground or whatever, and all of a sudden you've got a problem. Um, So I understand that Ron probably doesn't want to cause panic, but he was very short and very mum on that. And I... I'm admittedly reading between the lines, but I am reading between the lines that it's like, yep, we're trying out long snappers just in case. Hopefully it's nothing. Hopefully Cheeseman is fine. But it's the kind of thing where it's like you cut Nick Sundberg a couple years ago for no bleeping reason. The guy was nothing but consistent and steady for almost a decade. And and that's all you want out of a long snapper. You want consistency. And he was the model. And you cut him because... I don't know why. Then they drafted Cameron Cheeseman. A draft pick on a long snapper. Resource management. Kids, it's important. Learn about it. Live by it. All right. uh, Last two. Training camp pick six at six. Uh, Quick throwback to uh, yesterday. Actually, let's go to the kickers first, uh, and then we'll get back to yesterday. Uh, Kicking competition, obviously, in full swing. And uh, both the kickers were at the podium today because... Of course they were. Uh, Joey Sly, the incumbent, on whether he knew they would bring another kicker into camp. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know if they were or weren't. Didn't really care if they were or weren't. Um, I knew that I had stuff that I needed to work on um, coming into this year anyway. Um, had a little hiccup towards the end of last year and didn't put the final stamp that I wanted to on it. So um, knew I had stuff that I needed to work on and still continue to progress in. Like I said, going into year five for me, I still got things I'm working on to be the best that I can be. So um, for me, it was regardless if they brought someone in or not, I was still going to be doing the same thing. So, 
Always looking inwards for improvement. We like that. Approve it. Uh, pretty funny exchange between Sly and Mitch Tischler, by the way. Mitch asked him, like, hey, with all the uh, the kickoff rules changing, do you, like, work on any different techniques, anything like that? And Sly just goes, nope, I just work on banging touchbacks because that's who Joey Sly is. Uh, Michael Bagley is the other kicker. Uh, what's his approach towards the competition with Sly? Uh, it's a good opportunity. Uh, you know, you go into any type of competition, you know, at least for me, the same way. Uh, just go out there, just kick as well as you can and, you know, prove people wrong and just have fun with it. There you go. There's your kicking competition update. Uh, be curious to see how they split things on Friday. My guess is like Sly gets the first half, Bagley gets the second, and we'll see uh, who gets the kickoff. Uh, if they, they choose to kick off first. As for uh, thing number six on our training camp pick six at six, I want to rewind a bit to yesterday, uh, which was by all accounts the best practice of the season or of the preseason so far. And that follows Friday's practice where the offense was absolutely just bad. They could not get out of their own way. Just a, a Murphy's law of a practice. Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. And the way they bounce back Sunday, I think, shows the character of this team. Like, again, is that as character ultimately going to be enough to win you games? No, but I don't think you can win championships uh, or compete on a high level day in, day out, week in, week out in the NFL without it. You have to have a competitive character, an ability to bounce back, an ability to be resilient and to keep fighting and 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 do the right things and trust your process. And that's what they showed on Sunday. Um, they showed that despite the fact that doing all the things or trying to do the things that they're supposed to on Friday – blew up in their face you just go back again and do them again and they wind up working out a lot better on Sunday the timing was better the rhythm was better guys were catching the ball better throws from the quarterbacks offensive line did a better job um, it was just overall a better practice and we've talked a lot about the maturity of this team this year it's something Ron has been watching for a long time I think a practice like Sunday after a bad and a chippy one by the way on Friday um is a really, really good and healthy sign. And then just a kind of professional practice today on that lighter day. Uh, all good things. We'll see again, skill-wise, you know, execution-wise, what does it lead to on, in terms of wins on Sundays? But, um, you know, another, another checked box, if you will, for this team. Also something we talked about more in depth on Take Command, which you can listen to now on your favorite podcast platform. That'll do for our Pick 6 at 6. Thanks for watching this clip of our 2023 Washington Commanders training camp coverage. For more, check out the radio show live daily from 4 to 7 p.m. on the Team 980. We also stream live on the free Odyssey app, or you can watch the show here on YouTube at the Team 980. Subscribe right here for all our on-demand content. Click, click the button. Go now. Subscribe. And come on, while you're at it, let's be honest. If you made it this far, you probably liked what you saw. So go ahead and hit that like button too before another video starts. It's the polite thing to do.